Capcom lied to everybody. I wanted to show you guys this because people didn't know about this and I never really talked about it, but this is fucking hilarious. There is an absolutely crazy core mechanic in Dragon's Dogma 2 that can actually ruin your save file. And yep. I don't mean this hyperbole, I'm not talking about stat growths, for example, where you can make This will literally destroy your entire game. ...your character be suboptimal, so they end yeah. up doing a little bit less damage. I'm also not talking about how you can miss yeah. one quest, or something small like that. I'm talking about the dragon's... Bro, I saw this has happened to me. McConnell went rogue. Plague, and this is a huge deal. The director of Dragon's Dogma 2, yep. Hideaki Utsuno, has even gone on to say that whenever this event happens, mm -hmm. it's going to be a calamity and there will be catastrophic consequences. So a big heads up before I continue with the video. If you don't want to be spoiled about this mechanic, then click away from the video, but I will be talking about this mechanic because I have seen a lot of players complaining about it and how it ruined their save file and how they actually feel like they don't want to continue playing the game. So with that out of the way, hello everyone, my name is Dark Hero and let's get right into it. So what is the Dragon's Plague? What exactly does it do? How do you get it? And how can you avoid it? Let's start by talking about what exactly it is. Quite simply, one of your pawns, be it your- The problem is like, so McConnell did a voice line and he called me stupid, but I thought that he was calling the other pawn stupid because the other pawn was talking at the same time. So I was like, yeah, he is stupid, isn't he? Thanks, bro. But like, I didn't realize that he was talking about me. Main pawn or any of the pawns that you I hired. went and arrested at the end, I found the fuck out. ...from the rift can be afflicted with Dragon's Blight. Thankfully, there is a very easy and simple way for you to check if your pawn has Dragon's Blight. It's the eyes. If you look at them and you see that their eyes are red, that is an indication that they, That's a... they have contracted Dragon's yep. Blight. If it is your first time seeing it, you will be getting this pop-up that is going to indicate that one of your- By the way, I never got this pop-up. I never got this pop-up. It never gave me an indication. It never told me about this. You did? I did not. ...has contracted Dragon's Blight. It's not going to outright tell you exactly what that does, but at the very least, the game goes out of their way to warn you about it. Mm -hmm. So if you have never seen that notice, you are totally fine. That being said, you are likely going to encounter Dragon's Plague at some point in your playthrough. That being said, how exactly do you contract Dragon's Plague? I believe there are actually two different ways that your pawn can contract it, with one of them being that your main pawn is hired by a player that has another pawn that has the Dragon's Plague, and so it ends up spreading to your own pawn. So it's or like an STD or something? Okay. I thought it was whenever... So, like, I always assumed it was the longer you spend in combat with dragons the higher the probability that it will, like, activate on a pawn. That's what I thought. Again, you could just be hiring a pawn that already has the Dragon's Plague Affliction. That being said, I do believe mm -hmm. there is one more way of you contracting the Dragon's Plague. How's and that? And that is the drakes that you end up fighting yeah, exactly. in the actual game. Do you see... Because the they do that mind control shit where they pick them up. This Dragon's Dogma, and now in the sequel as well, these drakes can actually take control of one of your pawns, bend their will, and make them fight against you. And I do believe that mm -hmm. that is one of the ways in which Dragon's Plague ends up being spread. Because, think about it, there had to be a pawn that started having Dragon's Plague to be able to spread the affliction to other pawns. Maybe so the government made Dragon's Blight. Maybe it came from, like, the Chinese servers or something. Yeah, that could have been it. So I would advise you to, after fighting a Drake, keep a close eye on your pawns. Mm -hmm. So let us finally talk about the effects of this thing and how you can counter it. Once one of your pawns becomes infected with it, they will become much more aggressive in combat and will outright ignore the orders of the Arisen. And I believe there's even some unique- See, I thought mine were ignoring me because they were fucking stupid. Cause like, he was running back and forth and shit, and I was like, yeah, Capcom really needs to get their shit together. Like, I thought this was a bug. ...that your pawns will be saying when they have contracted He didn't want to listen, blood. yeah. However, the big thing here is that whenever you that go to rest so and in, while one of your pawns has contracted yep. Dragon's Plague, an ominous cutscene will play out where you will he see your laughing. character in a dark setting with their red eyes with this dark dragon's... I immediately, guys, I immediately alt f forward the game the second I saw it. Because it showed, like, a close-up and he started laughing. And I saw his eyes were red. I, I was like, I know what this is. I've never seen it, but I know what it is. And I alt f forward that shit immediately. I came back in. I walked outside the inn. Everybody was still fucking dead. They were gone. 
symbol and then the night will pass everybody and was whenever dead. you finish resting you will come back to a desert town your pawn has effectively killed off everyone. everyone that was there and i do mean everyone it doesn't matter whether or not it's your main pawn or one of your yep. hired pawns they will all be dead the random npcs that you see walking around town the shopkeepers the more yep. important storyline quest npcs will all be dead mm -hmm. you know how smash ultimate goes everyone is here well it's pretty much the same thing except everyone is dead yeah. now keep yeah. in mind that of course you can go ahead and use your wake stones to be able to that's revise. a waste some of the NPCs, but if for example you contract Dragon's Plague in Vernworth and you go to rest at the inn, you're going to kill everyone that is on that big city. However, thank Jesus, that's like a hundred people. Thankfully, there is a way to prevent this from happening. Well, for starters- You see that motherfucker? He's about to ruin your save file. If it's not your main pawn that has contracted Dragon's Plague, then you will be able to easily spot if a pawn that you are trying to hire has it or not. You just need to be careful and pay close attention to their eyes. You yeah. can even spot it in the rift while you are trying to hire a pawn. So if you happen to hire a pawn that has the Dragon's Plague, you can of course dismiss them. However, if it's the case of your main pawn, then the only way that you have he of dealing up. with this is to outright kill them. Go up to some place high and throw them off a cliff. That is pretty much how you deal with I think that you have to put them in the water. Because so, there's a connection that pawns have with the brine. And so I think that you have to put them in the water and it's like a reset button. It's like, a, yeah, plague. baptizing once them. Once you exactly. go back to a rift stone and summon your pawn back, they will no longer have the dragon's plague. However, once the effects of Dragon's Plague have already occurred, there's really nothing you can do to fix it other than using Wake Stones or an eternal Wake Stone that you can get- Assess the situation. ...from the Sphinx, which yeah. will revive everyone in the vicinity. But of course, keep in mind that those bodies are only going to be there for a limited period of time. Now, that being said, I have had Dragon's Plague occur three or four times already on my- Jesus, safe bro, you need to pay the fuck it. Yeah, this happened three times? Holy shit! What are you doing? Well, because I wake up. See the results of it, and oh, he just—he's making it happen on purpose. Buggy, okay. But the first time it happened to me, I was very Never surprised. Mind. It's fine. I was in the elf village, and everyone there ended up being killed. I had already finished all of these side quests regarding the. They elf. didn't speak American anyway. That's what they get village so i went ahead and only revived the innkeeper and one of the shopkeepers i did yeah. not revive the elf that initially asked you for a bow aka glenweir i didn't revive his dad and i didn't revive his sister Fuck i only used the wake stones on those two npcs mm -hmm. however when i came back to the elf village a few days later They're i back. saw it yeah. fully populated I had a one time where whenever this happened and then I brought McConnell back and he goes, Oh, sorry, mister. Master, if I cause you any trouble, I am sorry. I'm sorry for causing you any trouble. Oops. Master, what would you do if I were to be a there were tons of NPCs. That reminds me, like, you know what that makes me think of? Y'all ever have, like, a girl ask you a question that there's an obvious wrong answer to? Like, yeah, like, that's, that's one of those, like, fucking, like, needy girlfriend questions that even if you give them the right answer, they're going to think you're lying. Walking around, the second do you think she's pretty? Yeah. came back, and the elf sister whose name currently eludes me also came back to life. Additionally, once I entered the endgame of Dragon's Dogma 2, everyone else that was dead also came back to life. So that mm -hmm. was Glenweir and his dad, the village chief, and a couple of random NPCs came back to life. I've also had Dragon's Plague happen in a bunch of different towns, and after some time, some NPCs come back. did yeah. come back, but not all of them. It felt somewhat inconsistent, which makes the consequence of the Dragon's Plague not feel as impactful. But then again, it may have been a bug, and I honestly wish I had recorded my own reaction to it the first time it happened, because it was such a cool event. I know a lot of players don't like the idea of losing key NPCs in your playthrough, but personally, I think it makes for a cool story, and I like- It does, and I think that that they should keep it in the game because if you can you can get around it with the sphinx quest line and i think that again dragon's dogma is one of those games that 
reteaches you how to play a video game without thinking about what the highest optimized damage number, you know, min max, uh, highest upgraded, best farming location, secret farming spot, secret item, you know, speed run strategy is. Like, I, I think that's one of the best things about the game. And because of that, I think this is good. Like, it's like try to have, like, I know it sounds crazy, but try to make the gameplay an experience that you have rather than trying to force it to be just like every single other video game. Like, I had to reteach myself how to do that with Dragon's Dogma 1. And there were a lot of things in Dragon's Dogma 1. Like, for example, I accidentally hit somebody in the head with my hammer. Well, guess what happens? Now I'm in fucking jail. And I had, I had an experience that I remember. And at the end of the day, I think that matters. It's good to have that. How the original games are created. Yeah, try to actually, try to enjoy the game and not try to finish, like people, people play games and their goal is to finish the game as quickly as possible. I don't think that's a good mindset to have. These emergent gameplay moments that Dragon's Dogma 2 keeps providing and allow for you to have a different experience mm -hmm. compared to everyone else. That being said, I think that the Dragon's Plague could be a little bit more fleshed out. I think it would be cool if the game actually forced you to fight against one of your pawns, and it would be awesome if they had an actual boss health bar, and maybe the developers could even add some extra flair to their movements and attacks. And then at the He's end right, that would be cool. And maybe you end up with a single waystone shard or a single waystone that you can use to revive a key NPC. Mm -hmm. I think that would make the event a lot cooler because as it currently is, it's a cool fun thing that happens once and then you learn to deal with it and yeah. move on with your playthrough. I think it's a yeah, shame Yeah, and it that also like, I mean, I can see why people don't like it because it definitely is going to affect casual players more this mechanic has been so for know what's so going many on. players because I really do believe that the Dragon's Plague is a cool mechanic and you only get to experience it once. It's one of those memorable moments yeah. that you can find in things such as the Siofra River from Elden mm -hmm. Ring that you can only experience once. Oh, the that elevator, being yeah. said, I find it hilarious that now a bunch of players are going to be concerned and they are going to be paying close attention to the pawns that they yeah. hire. And as someone that has been sending forgeries of port crystals, I might just cover the entire face of my pawn or maybe just give him red eyes so that people can become even more paranoid. I think That's funny, I like that. That would be fun. Yeah. And so with that, I turn to you guys. Let me know if you have experienced Dragon's Plague before. And if you have, tell me exactly how it happened and how you reacted to it. I'm very curious to know about all of this. And despite this event happening to me just a few days before the game's actual release, I didn't make a video on it because I didn't want to spoil this big moment for many of you. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. Yeah, I, I think that this kind of stuff is what, like... It, like, little stupid bad things like that are what turns video games from a game into an adventure or into an experience. It's kind of like, I think the best example that I have is, like, whenever I got cursed in Dark Souls 1. Like, I remember that experience so well. And it's like, you do have bad experiences in games, but... I think that, again, it's like the problem with a lot of games now is that people play them and the players are so goal-oriented that they can't enjoy the game. I, I think that's really what's happening. And I think it's because of YouTube. It's because of Twitch. It's because of the fact that there's 500 games out there. And if you just take a step back and try to just enjoy yourself playing the game, your enjoyment will, like, multiply. You will enjoy yourself way more, or at least I do. I, I mean, there are some people that like speedrunning, and speedrunning is fun. It is. But I think that there's even more people that do it because it's like the norm. My name is Dark Hero, and as always, happy hunting. There it is. There it fucking is. And uh, yeah, it makes or Ori and the Wall of Will Wisps. Yeah, it makes it hard to enjoy exploring with high, high, how high the enemy density is. There is very high enemy density in... Like, there are a lot of things... Like, I really love Dragon's Dogma 2. Like, I've told you guys this already. Like, let me see how I pulled this shit up real quick. Like, I already have 70 hours in the game. And a lot of that... Like, I would say the majority of that at this point is off stream. Like, I'm playing the game constantly. I played it till, like, 5 in the morning or 6 in the morning last night. 
Like, I really, really enjoy the game. So, like, yeah, it's great. However, I'll give yeah, I'll give the video like this is this is good. I, I wanted to talk about this this event, but I never really had the time to, and so I'm glad glad I finally did that. And uh, it's a hype of shit. Why would you not want to be fighting constantly? I think that Dragon's Dogma One had a better variance of monster density and exploration. For example, I think that there are actually a lot of things that Dragon's Dogma One did better than Dragon's Dogma Two. For example, I think the music is way better in Dragon's Dogma 1. Like, it's just, it, it it's, and I think it's so much better. And also, he, this guy agrees with me. How do you get it? And calamity, and there will be catastrophic consequences. So Where is they it? had blood. It's not going to outright tell you exactly what that does, but at the you very least, the game goes out of their way to warn. That's the song, that's the music they play in Grand Soren. Dragon's Dogma 1 is way too underrated. Well, Dragon's Dogma 1 has a lot of problems, but there are a lot of good things about the game. Did you finish one? I rolled credits on one. I didn't finish it. Did you see the unmoored world in game where you need to evacuate the cities? The unmoored world is the reason why the game didn't get a 8.5 or, or 8 out of me. That was probably one of the coolest and most insane reveals that I have ever seen in a video game. I absolutely fucking loved it. Like, the way that I felt whenever that happened, I felt the same way as whenever I went to the Dark World for the first time in Link to the Past, back in Super Nintendo. I fucking loved it. I wish that we had more time. I think that it was too restrictive on the time frame, though. Because I wanted to explore the whole world and do more stuff in it. And I also got the vibe of like, uh, you know, Ocarina, Majora's Mask, where it's like, I just want to play the game. I don't want to have to be like worrying. Oh my God, it's going to be, I'm going to run out of time, I'm going to run out of time. New Game Plus needs to have perm on Mord World, like bitter back out. Yeah, yeah. Like I would just like, I just, I don't like playing. I don't like doing shit on a timer, bro. Like I, I, I hate doing shit on a timer. Cause now it's like, okay, now I've got to go, 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 go. Like, I don't want to think like that. I just want to fucking realize, like, if I want to look over and watch a YouTube video for 40 minutes while I'm in game, I don't want to be punished for this. Like, I, it's, it's, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Like, I get that's why some people like it, but I don't. I'm not like that. Yeah. Again, you sent it bitter block liar. It needs would be 10 to 10. Well, they were asking, like, apparently Capcom was asking about if people want DLC. I feel like, like, I will probably talk a little bit about, like, I, I want to finish Dragon's Dogma 1 to the, to the capacity that I feel confident talking about it. Because, like, right now, like, I don't really feel, like, super confident talking about that game because I haven't played enough of it. So, Iceborne size expansion. Yeah, if, if, if Dragon's Dogma 2 had an Iceborne level expansion... I think that it would actually be, like, on the level of, like, timeless game that people will come back to and still think is amazing in 20 years. Like, right now, it's a great game. But I think that if it has a le if it, it has, if it has the level of content expansion that Iceborne provided, then yeah. Like, Elderman, yeah, it could maybe get there. Dragon's Dogma 1 DLC is Iceborne level? Yeah, and again, like, Iceborne and Dragon's Dogma were both made by Capcom, Monster Hunter, right? So, there's a good chance that it'll happen. I can't talk about it because you haven't played enough when you shared the same sentiment towards Retail WoW. I wish you shamed, shared the same, same sentiment towards Retail WoW. Well, no, because, well, Retail WoW, I've played Retail WoW a lot, and I understand Retail WoW. Like, it, it, there's nothing that's changed with Retail WoW. Like, obviously, like, never... Like, for example, like, I'm not going to tell you guys how good a raid boss is on Mythic. I understand you might be butthurt that I'm not playing Retail WoW, and so you think my opinions on the game are irrelevant. Let me promise you they're not. The issue with, like, spell effects being hard to see, and timers being shitty, and, like, an overabundance of abilities, I guarantee to you, these are actual problems. Just because I'm not doing the latest slop that they've put out into the game doesn't mean that it's not the same that's been for seven years. Do you want to see any other uh, island in Dragon's Dogma 1 to kill Daimon? You should try it. Um, I don't know what they should really do. I think that they should just, just, just add more content. Like, I don't have any real opinion on what the content is, but just add more content. You know, skinny person, uh, and what about you? And their opinions are always positive. Oh, of me? Bro, like, I don't know. You're asking the wrong people then. 
Like, a lot of people fucking hate me in WoW, bro. Like, I, that is, is crazy how many people get pissed off about me. It's fucking funny, though.